I'm going to show Silicon Valley folks how they could take small budget, 65 grand, and buy not one, not two, not three, but four rental properties. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the MLS Search and Analysis Show. I am James Wise. I will be your host. And I am going to tell all you Silicon Valley folks, all you tech geniuses out there, how you can get not one, not two, not three, but four rental properties with tenants for only $65,000 of your money, right? I'm working with an investor from Silicon Valley, obviously. His name is Matt. And Matt, you have sixty-five grand, and you reached out to me, and you were thinking you wanted to do bird deals, right? Buy, renovate, refinance, rent, and repeat. I think I fucked that up. Buy, renovate, rent, refinance, repeat. There we go, right? Essentially, you buy a jacked-up-ass house. You fix it up. You put in a tenant. You get the bank to come in and appraise it. We're hoping the appraised value is now more than your acquisition cost and your rehab, and then you repeat the process, pulling all your money back out, right? You want to do that. You got sixty-five grand, and you're looking at the Cleveland market because it's much cheaper than uh, California, much cheaper than Silicon Valley, right? And you're looking in some neighborhoods, South Euclid, Tremont, Euclid, Parma, right? And you're hoping to do this on one to four unit properties, right? Single families, duplexes, triplexes, quads, right? The bad news is that shit ain't going to work. Can't do any of that, bro. Good news is I'm going to show you how to get four properties with that 65 Gs, right? Uh, your expectations on the market are not going to happen, right? Ain't no scenario in the Cleveland market anywhere right now where you can do any type of multifamily bird deal with only 65 Gs. Just not going to fucking happen. Pricing ain't there, right? That leads us to single families. Uh, yeah, possible in some D-grade neighborhoods to do that. Uh, but definitely not happening in, like, South Euclid, Parma, Tremont, right? Like, cheapest house on the market in a place like Parma at any point in time is going to be double your budget, right? We're looking at at least 120 k and you're not going to be able to do bird deals with financing. The market's just too competitive. I know that was one of your questions to me. Can I do bird deals with financing? No. I mean, technically, possibly, yeah, but, I mean, dude, if you want, we could do, like, 500 videos for you, and maybe we might get a seller to accept like a financed burr type offer, right? We might be able to get a seller to accept an offer that was low enough that will allow you to come in with financing and burr, right? But that doesn't make any sense, right? You're going to pay me to analyze 500 properties for you? That would be crazy. I mean, if you want me to do it, I will. But, you know, obviously we're charging per video, right? So the expectations, you know, that, that's not very reasonable, right? Just where the market's at right now, pricing is up. It's 2021. Um, and just the competition is so intense that any of these bird deals are going to require cash offers, but uh, they're going to require cash offers that are much higher than 65K, especially in those neighborhoods. Uh, if after this video and another one I'm filming for you, you really want to try to do a burr, uh, we could look into some very low-income neighborhoods uh, and possibly pull that off with your budget. Uh, but I don't think that's necessarily the most realistic thing for you. Instead... I've come up with a plan of attack that I think is much better, right? You'd be surprised at the types of deals you can buy if you're targeting properties that don't necessarily need a huge amount of rehab, but they have tenants in there who are paying below market rents, right? We could take your 65K because your ultimate goal here, right? Your ultimate goal is not to do a bunch of hard fucking renovations. No, your ultimate goal is to stretch that 65K as far as possible, right? So I'm going to show you a deal where you're only going to tuck in about like 15 of that 65K and we stack on another uh, property number two, number three, and number four, we should be able to get four of these deals done for you with a reasonable amount of consistency in the Cleveland market in a relatively short period of time. So uh, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and I'm going to jump into the numbers for you on that first property. All right, let's jump into the property. I like this one quite a bit, right? We got a big old uh, colonial, and you'll have to forgive the pictures, right? The listing agent just, like, screenshotted them. I believe what they did is uh, 
just screenshot them from like a formal rental listing or something of that nature. So they're not that great, but this is very much low income investing, right? This is what you're going to anticipate, right? You got to pay attention to the big ticket items, right? Like this hot water tank, it would cost a thousand dollars to replace it. That looks to be a fairly new hot water tank to me, right? As far as the outside looks pretty good, pretty reasonable, right? Now, uh, as far as this investment, right, it's a little dated, but that's okay because we already have tenants in there, right? We already have a tenant in there. We got a tenant in there paying seven fifty a month, and they're on a month-to-month -month lease, right? We don't want them to move out, okay? Because look at this kitchen. This is a dated kitchen, right? As far as the market rents go, much higher than that, right? The market rents on this are $1,000 a month, which, by the way, you can see the address on the chart there. I don't think I said it yet. 3197 West 94th, Cleveland 44102, right? So the market rents on this are 1000 bucks a month. That'd be 12000 a year coming in, right? Now, if that 12000 a year schedule to come in, you don't get to keep that, folks. That's not how this works, right? There are costs associated with uh, rental properties, right? So $1,000 a month is what would be scheduled to come in. But we got to take into account that people don't pay every month. Sometimes you got to evict people. Throughout your course of ownership, you're going to have turnovers, right? It's all part of the game. So we average all that out for you to give you uh, the most transparent perspective at what your ownership experience would actually be like, right? So of the 12 Gs that's supposed to come in, you're really going to be spending six and a half of that on the costs associated with running a rental, right? Including property management. So what your your money coming home to you is really going to be 5387 on average, right? 5387 on average as far as the purchase price, right? The seller wants 68. I think we could pick it up at 65. If we were able to pick it up at 65, you only need about 15 G's, right? 16,250 to be exact. The bank's going to kick in the other 48,750, and that would pencil out to be an 18% cash on cash return. I don't know where else you can buy real estate for about 15 grand and get an 18% cash on cash return. But don't just focus on that, right? We have to focus on exactly what you're getting. We have to focus on the risks that are uh, around the corner, right? Don't just go into this blind, right? That's how you lose money, right? What you have to understand is the current tenant, they're not paying that 1000 As I said before, they're only paying 750 okay? They're paying 750 And we don't want them to move out and put a $1,000 tenant in there. Why? Because the $1,000 tenant ain't going to live in this house with the kitchen looking like this. We'd have to renovate that kitchen, right? We don't want to do that because that's money out of your pocket. Instead, what we want to do is try to get that $750 tenant slowly up as close as we can get them to that market rent, right? We do that by slowly increasing their rents, right? Even if the money is a little bit lower, you always want money coming in, right? You don't want to be setting money out, right? This is real estate investing. Eventually... This tenant's going to move out. That's just the name of the game, folks. If you think you could buy a rental and your tenant's just going to live there forever, you're in fucking pie in the sky land. That's not how this business works, especially in a neighborhood like this, right? It's like a CD-grade neighborhood, right? When you're in a CD-grade neighborhood, what I like to do is when I place tenants, I like to put them in Section 8 tenants, right? Because that guarantees the government's rent. And if the house is very nice, they typically stay longer. Why would they move? They don't have to pay for the rent, right? That's the best case scenario. But you should not try to hurry to get to that, right? Consider that the long-term play. As far as the interim, the short-term play, you want to keep as much money coming into you with while simultaneously sending as little money out right that's the name of the game i get investors all the time they get greedy they see the market rent of a thousand they see the current tenant paying 750 They're like how do i get that 250 but they fail to understand that if you try too hard to get that 250 right now you're going to just cost yourself several months of vacancy in like a 10 fifteen thousand dollar rental right there's going to be enough 10 fifteen thousand dollar rentals in your future if you're in the real estate space right do not artificially create more Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.